mastering Python or just mastering a programmer language in general is an idea that really interests me. It's something that I see quite a lot on Reddit. You see posts like, if I practice for X hours a day, can I master Python? Or how long do I need to take to master a language? Um, even back in my university days, I used to have students ask me, if I'm doing this degree and practicing for like an hour a day, can I master it by the time I've done my master's degree or whatever? Now it's an interesting idea and I did a bit of research on like some definitions of what mastery actually is. And for programming, I think there's like two camps of what mastery actually is. And I want to argue my case for what I think mastering a language actually entails. And um, the whole point of this really is I'd like to kind of open a discussion. So if you have your own definition of mastery, I'd like to hear it. So feel free to comment. I'd like to start a discussion. I think it's a nice kind of interesting topic to have a chat about. So the traditional idea of mastering something, so you know, once you can do topics X, Y, Z, you've done this many hours, near the whole 10,000 hour thing, um, I don't think is a great idea at all for Python. I think it's more of a prolonged attitude you have. So I think it comes from more of like a growth mindset. So if you can develop a mastery attitude with growth mindset, I think that is much more important than just trying to aim for a static goal at some point in the future. Giving yourself these metrics is not ideal. So don't be like, once I can do these projects, I can do these lead code questions, I am now a master. It's more of a, an attitude you develop over time and something that you constantly try and get better and better and better at. I think that's a much more sustainable way of thinking as a programmer. And it's something I'm trying to practice and something I'm trying to get better at myself. So I want to outline a range of different areas of programming. And I want to kind of talk through how to approach them and how I think these can help develop you on that kind of mastery mindset as a Python developer. Um, this isn't an extensive list. It's not an exhaustive list. So if you have your own ideas of certain attitudes or certain tenants you try and abide by to master programming, feel free to let me know. And of course, if you disagree with any of these, feel free to let me know as well. The first one I think is really simple and that's just consistent practice. I think to get into that mastery mindset, programming has to be something that you do on a very regular basis, ideally daily, and you should be practicing in a wide range of different domains. Luckily for my work, I get to code pretty regularly. I also do my own projects on the side as well. I also do things like leak code and edit it, and I also do a bit of work for other people, just kind of helping them fix their problems. So for me, that's my practice. It's pretty much daily. Uh, I do some code on the weekends as well. So that's something that I quite enjoy doing. It's nice having that regular exposure to Python. The second one is project-based learning. And I think this is important because, you know, you may have heard of things like tutorial hell, where you're just kind of copying X and doing Y. You know, it's, it's a bit monotonous. I think you really start to develop your skills when you try and take something you've learned and then try and apply it to a real world problem. So project-based learning in a wide range of different domains using a wide range of libraries, I think is a really important asset to have towards developing that mastery mindset. This next one's a bit controversial, but it's something that I found really useful. And that's looking at and learning other languages that aren't Python. Um, so to tell you a bit of a story, when I did my masters, we had a whole module just on programming paradigms. You looked at things like OOP, declarative, you know, functional program, functional languages, etc. And we had to spend a lot of time just coding in Haskell, which is a purely functional declarative language. So you've got like no explicit if statements, there's no kind of state changes. But what you have got are a whole ton of comprehensions and Python can do comprehensions. So I effectively learn comprehensions to a much higher degree by doing another language, Haskell, which I was basically forced to do them. Um, so after my experience in Haskell, I went back to Python and I just found I was doing comprehensions like naturally, just because I was kind of forced to do it a long time. So there's always things you can take from other languages. You know, there's always attitudes and bits of syntax you can kind of develop and learn and then bring them back into Python. And I think just having that awareness of what's available in other languages is really useful to have. So I'd highly recommend if you're kind of, you know, you've done a few months or a few years in Python, have a look at another language. It's interesting to see kind of what the syntax is like. And you never know, you might learn something can bring it back into your Python repertoire. Uh, next up is problem solving. And uh, this can be a range of things. It can be as traditional as things like leak code. Personally, I quite like leak code. It's quite nice to kind of go on once or twice a week and try and solve a problem. Uh, I do it as part of the channel as well. So we do like a monthly coding challenge. And I think with problem solving, it's not specifically just like Python you're learning. Many jobs, 
you know, many Python jobs, coding jobs, require you to solve a problem or write code to match some kind of brief. And quite often we might know how to solve a problem. So say a problem like two sum, you could probably like sketch it out on paper and do it. But the hard bit for me, I think is actually writing the Python code to like make your pseudocode do what it's supposed to do. So that's the bit I quite enjoy practicing. And things like leak code, yeah, they're a pain in the ass at first. I think the first time I saw leak code, I was like, what the hell is this? Um, all those many years ago. But nowadays, I quite enjoy it. I quite enjoy coming up against a new problem, taking the time and going through it, and translating a solution on paper to a solution in Python. So I'd highly recommend doing some kind of problem solving as part of your practice. And that is definitely one of the kind of assets to me towards kind of mastering Python. Our next one is continuous learning. I think this one's quite obvious. To be honest, I mean, Python is a super dynamic language in the way that we're always having new versions or, you know, at least new minor versions added to the language. There's always new libraries coming out. And quite often we have new libraries which come along as replacements for old ones. So things like pandas and polars sort of do roughly the same thing. And I think a good attitude to have, especially if you want to kind of go towards this mastery attitude of learning a language is recognizing when a new library, which you don't know, might be better than an old library that you're comfortable and happy with. I try my best to do this. I'm certainly not the best at it. I use pandas and numpy a lot. And some situations that are of libraries which are better, I just don't want to use them because I'm not that comfortable. So that's one thing I'm trying to improve in my own personal practice is kind of not being so stubborn and recognizing that occasionally there are better things. Like I used to use OS all the time when actually Pathlib is a whole lot better for me. So yeah, it's things like that, kind of recognizing when libraries are better than what you're currently using, trying to learn them and trying to adapt and trying to make your code better and better, you know, each iteration or each year or whatever. The next one's a little tricky because it requires other people, uh, but it's peer collaboration. Now, when I, when I go climbing, I often try and climb with people or climb around people who are better than me. And I think the reason why is because you can see them doing the same climbs as you and you see them using just really good technique. You see them kind of walk up things, which I found quite difficult. Um, benefit of that is you just get to watch them. So if you can do the same thing with programming, you know, if you can watch other developers, even like on YouTube, just do a walkthrough of them coding, it's really helpful to watch like their thought process and watch how they structure and write their code. Um, I found that when I was kind of first learning, I just used to watch people like silently code stuff on YouTube and found it, um, weirdly quite relaxing, which I don't know if that's strange or not. Um, but I used to kind of find it really interesting and really impressive how they could just say, okay, I'm gonna build an API, gonna be using this, it's gonna have these endpoints. And like, they could just do it without like looking at any documentation. So I'd highly recommend just finding some way of watching people who are better than you um, and try and just kind of watch what they do, especially if they're much better. Try and watch what they do. Don't try and like copy exactly, but it's interesting to watch how people who are better than you work, and eventually you can kind of develop that mindset as well. The last one I have is reading code, specifically big open source projects. Now we're quite lucky with Python that many of the popular libraries are open source. That's quite good. So you can go and read how the code is done. And I think reading code, especially like reading coding books, things like clean code, fluent Python is really interesting. I know clean code is done in, it's not in Python, but I think with reading of a code, it's a nice way to kind of get better at coding without actually like writing code yourself. You kind of take in the code in a different way, you know, different to how you would normally just do it as if like it was your code you're writing. So say you're reading a really big library, you might have a chance to look at the design patterns they've used. They might be different to what you normally do. They might use comprehensions differently. They might use classes and functions and methods differently to you. So it's a nice opportunity to look at, I mean, especially like I mean, touch wood, they have to be like good packages, but things like pandas and numpy, if you get a chance to read the source code, it's really interesting to go through and just observe how some really popular packages are written, documented and published. So I'd highly recommend doing so if you have the chance. It's definitely something that I've done. And I feel like I've gotten a lot of benefit from. Now moving on, um, I asked ChatGPT about this. I was like, what do you think about mastery in, in coding? Like, is it possible? And it kind of argued the same point, like, like mastery is a journey. It's not a, a fixed point in time. And that brings me on to my next point. I'll try and get a picture of this on the screen now. It's something called the Dunning-Kruger effect or the Dunning-Kruger curve. And this absolutely highlights my like personal journey in coding. So on the x-axis, you have competence. And then on the y-axis, you have confidence. Everyone starts off knowing nothing with no confidence. 
and then maybe a month in, you've learned how to do some loops, some functions, you maybe wrote your first class, your confidence goes really far up. But in the grand scheme of things, you don't actually know that much. You've done a bit of the library, but high confidence, you know a little bit of Python now. And then quite quickly after this, you have this moment where you realize there's actually way more stuff in Python than just like loops, functions, and classes, etc. And you drop down into what's called the Valley of Despair. What you have then is this gradual curve coming out of this. And this is called the Slope of Enlightenment, which then gets into the Plateau of Sustainability. I'm not making this up, that's actually what the graph says. And what this is, this represents the journey kind of upwards and onwards, where your confidence is slowly growing in kind of relation or in proportion to your competence. And I'm hoping that's where I am now. I've definitely had that bit at the start, I've had that initial peak. I'm trying to develop this growth mindset to kind of always thinking, there's always something I don't know how to do in Python. I'm always trying to be kind of reflective. I'm always trying to look at my code and think about how it can be done better. And I'm always trying to solve problems, things like leak code and add a bit. And to me, that's, I think, where I am now. And I think that's what the definition of mastery is. It's a place that I'm not quite at yet, but it's a journey towards having this attitude of, I'm not perfect, I'm trying to get as good as I possibly can, and always respecting that there's always someone who knows more than you, there's always gonna be things you can't solve, and just trying to work towards that in kind of a nice, calm, consistent way with simple practice of working with others, solving problems, etc. It's definitely a journey, not a fixed point. This graph doesn't end, it doesn't mean like, you know, you get to this slope and suddenly it's like, da-da, you've mastered it. This keeps going, and I think recognizing and realizing that is quite a relief. It's quite a nice place to be. So to round off the video, I kind of want to leave it to you guys. Do you have any thoughts on what it means to actually master Python? Have you been to that same place where you know a couple of bits and think you know the whole world? Or do you think you're kind of where I am now? You're recognizing that you're okay, but there's still way more to learn. So yeah, guys, feel free to ping us a comment. I'll reply to as many of them as I can. I do quite enjoy a nice discussion in the comments. I do hope this was helpful and hope it kind of encourages you to think a bit about where you are in your programming journey now. Cheers for watching guys and see you all in the next video.